There are a bunch of things that happened after I recorded the first episode of WNBA Weekly. Uh, the NBA TV announced their schedule for their broadcast, and as I suspected, they did air all the WNBA games. And I just, I just didn't want to say they would do it out loud, and then they don't end up doing it. But I did have that feeling because they were saying WNBA all day. So since they already had the ESPNs and the Twitters, I figured the remaining ones would be on NBA TV. I just couldn't say it and then, you know, look like a fool for not being able to take it back. So, that's the thing. Also, there was a lot of roster shuffling last week with all the final cuts being made. I didn't cover any of those, and I'm not going to cover most of them. There are, like, a couple surprises. Like, you know, the Liberty? No, they cut Shoni Schimmel and Lindsay Allen, and then the Aces immediately picked them up. Bill Lambert knows what he likes. You know, you got the fever cutting Alana Larkins and the Jeanette Pollen Mavunga, the last two holdouts from that championship year. So it's a whole new era for Indiana. Also, I was going to wear this t shirt, but then I realized it's sky blue, and I don't want to show too much bias. Also, in general, I just look better in darker colors. Matches my skin tone. Greetings and welcome to The Fan Perspective. I am your host Nathan Lyle and this is WNBA Weekly, the show where every Monday I talk about things that have happened recently in the association and a couple of things I'm looking forward to in the upcoming days. We got a bunch of amazing individual performances that happened opening weekend. For one thing, you got some great rookies debuting, like Asia Wilson has a double double. Kia Nurse, she managed to be second on the team in points and assists, tied to lead the team in steals, a couple of rebounds for good measure. Oh, and she also managed to piss off half of the Sky roster. You got a couple of MVPs showing up and getting things done early. You know, Griner versus Stewie. You know, they both have dueling double doubles when they go head to head, stepping up when their teammates need them. You got Skylar D and Smith off to a great start. You got you know, a couple of record breaking performances from people like Diana Taurasi. Opening night, she becomes the all time leading scorer in professional women's basketball history and becomes the first WNBA player with over a thousand points. Sue Bird, in her opening night, the first shot that she makes puts her in eighth place on the all time scoring list, right behind former teammate Lauren Jackson, who she could pass by the end of the year. It was a short opening weekend, so right now every team in the league is either winless or undefeated with the exception of the Dallas Wings, who have one win and one loss. You've got the Indiana Fever at the very bottom at 0-2, Sky and Mercury at the very top at 2-0. The Las Vegas Aces started off their franchise very poorly. Now, Asia Wilson had her double-double, Tamara Young nearly had a career high in points, but other than that, nothing really went well for them after that first quarter. The, the Connecticut Sun, they, they came out and dominated early. You, know, you basically got a team that's expected to finish top three versus a team expected to finish bottom three. So Connecticut did what they were supposed to. You know, the Aces ended up losing by 36 points, which is the largest opening night loss in WNBA history. Good news for the Aces, though. There were team in transition, there are so many new faces, so many new places, and you've got a bunch of their players still missing, Kelsey Plum and McBride still haven't returned from overseas, Mariah Jefferson and uh, Isabella Harrison not playing right now. So that's the thing that every Las Vegas fan should know. You only got up to go from here. Like you literally can't get any worse than this. It's just not physically possible. So look forward to that. The, there's going to be a huge upturn for this team from the beginning of season to the end. So you got the bad thing out of the way first. The most fun game to watch this weekend was definitely the Lynx versus the Sparks. That being said, the Mercury versus the Storm, close second because you know, there were a couple of missteps late in the game that you know if the Storm had completed that comeback to either win or force overtime, that probably would have been my favorite. But I really think that Candace Parker hit on it perfectly. 
every year, man, opening night, make the t- teams that played each other in the finals go head to head. Because that was just excitement. You got the Lynx opening up with that championship presentation. They revealed their banner. And then the Sparks spoiled everything when, despite missing Candace Parker, they managed to keep the game close. They had a lot of help from the Lynx who couldn't stop turning it over. And Chelsea Gray ends up hitting a game winner. I am legitimately shocked by this, not just because Candace Parker, who's basically an MVP candidate every season, was missing the game, but because the Lynx have been so dominant at the beginning of seasons. Honestly, when's the last time that Minnesota lost a game in May? And now they're starting their season winless. Seriously, every year, make that the thing, opening night. Yo, the teams that played each other in the finals go head to head. That needs to be like a regular, consistent, every year thing. There are so many things I could discuss that we could stand here dissecting, but the main thing to put and leave in mind is that these teams have all played one or two games. There's no reason to get too far ahead of ourselves with our predictions. So, you know, the Sky and Mercury both 2-0, that doesn't mean we put them in the finals right now. You know, there's a long season to grind it out. And you never know, because until they actually win that third game, always a chance that these two teams could finish the year with two wins. Definitely not going to happen, I'm just saying, like, technically it is possible. You can put the fever at that first overall draft pick, though. I mean, I already did that back in, like, October, so... You know, that, that's okay. But yeah, that's the main thing I want to touch on. Let's not get too excited after one game. Opening weekend, fantastic. Not an accurate measure of anything yet. Let, let's wait another week, see, let everyone get at least five games under their belts before we really start going in on people. Don't forget, the Sun started one in five at the beginning of last season. And then they tore it up the rest of the way and ended up with the fourth seed. So we'll take a short break to look at your current standings. And now we'll move on to the part of the show where I talk about all the games that I'm looking forward to seeing in the next seven days. Technically six, but you get the point. As always, I will tell you which ones are currently scheduled to air nationally. And for the rest, just check your local listings or you can watch every single game on WNBA League Pass. And don't forget, every time I give you is Eastern Standard Time. Be sure to adjust for your time zone. One of the most interesting things to happen this week is the New York Liberty. Pay close attention to them because they only have one game this week. Half of the teams in the league are going to be playing three games and a bunch of others that are only going to be playing two. The New York Liberty only have one game this week, on Friday, against the Lynx. So, you know, the legitimate possibility that they could be the only winless team left next Monday. Just because of who they're playing. You know, and like I said, other teams like the Fever, they've got a tough road, so there's a good possibility they'll still be dead last when I do the next episode, just because you know they're playing a bunch of teams that are all expected to make the playoffs. But they also have three games, which gives them three chances to get a win. So you never know. New York, you know, depending on how other teams do, could potentially end up being dead last in the standings but at the end of this week. That being said, technically Minnesota could also potentially end up being dead last in the standings by the end of the week if they go 0-3 this week. But that's a lot less likely to happen. There aren't as many games being put on TV this week. You've got a Twitter game between the Fever and the Sparks Tuesday night. Uh, Thursday night, you've got a couple of ESPN games. You've got the Fever and the Mystics on ESPN3. Probably not going to get as many viewers just because at the exact same time on ESPN2, you've got the Sparks versus the Sun. Chanae and Neca going head-to-head for the first time in two years. And then you've also got <laughs> uh, two potential champions. Like, this could be a potential finals preview if I get my way at least. You've got you know, two teams that started off the year undefeated. You know, the 
The Sun completely dominated the Aces, and you've got the Sparks who managed to just, you know, defeat the defending champions, even though the Sparks were playing without their best player. That's probably the most interesting thing about this year, this way that they scheduled things. I mean, how many teams are even going to make it undefeated out of this second week of the season? You know, how many, is anyone actually going to go 10-0 this year to start off? And a couple other matchups I want to touch on that look interesting to me. One of them, Wednesday, uh, 12 p.m. game between the Dream and the Sky. And then you've also got a couple of night games that look very interesting, like the Lynx versus the Wings. You know, t Wings are going to be tested early right now. They've got a lot of tough teams on their schedule. Let's see if they can prove me right about them being a much better team this season. And you cap off the night with a battle between the Storm and the Mercury. It's always very interesting when teams face each other back to back. And also another game I'm looking forward to on Sunday, they've got the Mercury versus the Sparks. Because once again, how many teams are going to be undefeated at the end of this week? There are a lot of teams that are undefeated right now who are facing off against each other in the next six days. So I'm very interested to see how that all turns out. So that's it for this edition of WNBA Weekly. Tune in next Monday for another all new episode. And until then, this has been the Fan Perspective. I'm your host, Nathan Nile. Have a great week. To those of you who actually watched to the end of the video, thank you. I appreciate it. I'd appreciate it even more if you left some comments down below. Question of the week. Which team is going to stay undefeated the longest? And for me personally, I feel like the Aces, Fever, and Liberty are the teams with the best chance of staying, under, staying winless the longest. So leave a comment down below which of those teams is going to get that first W. The Liberty are definitely a better team than the Aces and the Fever, but the Aces and Fever have more cracks at it.